Dynamic change in aerodynamics of F1. Why is so much money and energy spent looking at the shapes of Formula One cars? Fundamentally, because it pays dividends. If you can reduce the drag of a car, you will go faster on the straights. If you can use the shape of the car to generate some downward pressure, usually called downforce, onto the tyres, then the car will go faster around the corners. Research into aerodynamics has allowed cornering speeds in high-speed corners to be much higher than that which is possible without the use of aerodynamic aids, although it has reduced ultimate top speeds. Track lap times have improved significantly. So, what are the aerodynamics of F1 and what changes are brought in it? Let's find out. The aerodynamics of F1 cars is intensively researched. An annual 5-10% to downforce increases have been possible if rules don't change too much between seasons. Due to the nature of the vehicles, the aerodynamics of F1 cars are quite different to that of road cars, with drag coefficients of between 0.7 and 1.0. This is between about two and four times as much as a good modern road car. This is partly due to the rules. Running exposed wheels is part of the definition of an open-wheeled racing car, and partly because downforce is usually much more important than drag. F1 is introducing new aerodynamic regulations for 2022, with the aim of reducing the dirty air produced by the current cars, which makes passing difficult. The new F1 car features a simple front wing and a rear wing designed to push the aerodynamic wake up and over the car following behind. For the first time since the 1980s, F1 cars will use ground effects to generate downforce, with the 2022 cars featuring deep tunnels in the floor to suck the car to the track. The increasing complexity of Formula 1 cars' aerodynamic add-ons has negatively impacted the quality of racing recently. All of the intricate winglets poking out of the bodywork create a stream of dirty air coming off the car, causing cars behind to lose downforce, making it harder to execute a pass. For the 2022 season, F1 is introducing new aerodynamic regulations with the goal of reducing this dirty air, and the series has now presented a life-size model of what the next generation of F1 cars will look like. F1 says that the current cars lose 35% of their downforce when they are around three car lengths behind another car, with the loss increasing to 47% when they are about one car length behind. The new rules promise to lessen those downforces losses to 4% and 18%. A redesigned front wing is simpler than before and has wing flaps that now stretch all the way to the nose. This eliminates the inner wing tips found on the current cars, which create a vortex that produces much of the dirty aerodynamic wake. Another big change comes underneath the car. While current F1 cars have a fairly flat floor with a stepped design, the 2022 version will feature deep underfloor tunnels to produce downforce through a ground effect because simpler wings will yield less downforce. This is said to allow for sleeker bodywork, create less dirtier air and be less impacted by the dirty air when following another car. The barge boards, pieces of bodywork placed vertically for better aerodynamics protruding from the floors of the current cars, have also been scrapped. The new 18-inch wheels with low-profile tyres are strikingly different as the current cars use 13-inch wheels. F1 is also reintroducing wheel covers and adding small winglets over the wheels to control airflow. The 2022 regulations aim to steer the weight tightly along the sides of the car rather than forcing it outwards as the current front-end design does. The rear wing also gets an overhaul with rounded edges compared to the boxy wings on the 2021 cars. This new design is meant to direct the aerodynamic wake coming off the back of the car upward and over any following cars so that drivers have less disturbed air to contend with when setting up a pass. From groundbreaking aerodynamics to improved brake design, the progress led by F1 teams has benefited hundreds of millions of cars on the road today. This strategy is in line with initiatives started some years ago by the FIA with the creation of the Environmental Accreditation Programme. What do you think of this whole situation? Let us know your opinion in the comments. And while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you in the next video.